Here's what you need to know before riding the Tesla. Hamid will set you up with the car insurance and he'll give you the Tesla key. The key looks like this. It fits great in your wallet. And the way it works is you just place it on the driver's side door to open the door, right? And once you hear it click, press into the fat side of the door handle to open the door. Okay, so you're in the car, but it's still it's still too early to drive. We need to set the mirror so you can better see what's going on, which you do by clicking this car icon here on the tablet. This brings up the quick controls menu. We're gonna be in here a lot, um, which you're welcome to explore. So the way you adjust your mirrors is you hit the mirrors button, and then you turn your attention to these two knobs on the steering wheel. Use the left one to move the left mirror up, down, left, or right. Oh, and don't forget to use your hand to adjust the rear view mirror too. Next, you can use the quick controls menu again to adjust the steering wheel. Once you hit the button, use the knobs to adjust how close it is to you or high, how high or low you need it. The insurance will be in the glove box. So you open the glove box using the glove box button from the quick controls menu. And if you get pulled over, this is exactly what you need to do. So if you get pulled over, hit this glove box button, it'll open the glove box so you can grab what you need. In the rare case where you need to reset the car because of some strange behavior, what you need to do is you press and hold the two knobs on the steering wheel to perform a soft reset. So it's going to take a few minutes and you can do this while driving, um, but it will reboot the car for you. Range! Okay. So this battery icon represents your range or how many miles you have left in your battery. The Axo car has a range, a max range of around 220 miles. Uh, but keep in mind that if you drive uphill, so any steep terrain, any trips to Flagstaff, or if you drive irresponsibly fast, like I may have done a few times, it will consume the battery faster. The closest supercharger is located at this parking structure in Scottsdale Quarter from the first floor back into any available stall. And then once you're parked, the way you get out of your car is you hit this button and that'll open the door. And that goes for any of the passenger doors. And walk outside and open this flap to access the, the plug. So grab the supercharger, plug it in, and it will start charging the car. So you can hang out in the car if you wish, but because you're at Scottsdale Quarter, feel free to walk around, grab a cup of coffee, maybe even get some food. But keep in mind that um, we do get charged for the charging for the charge session, and Tesla will charge us a dollar a minute for any extra time that your car is just sitting there idling, fully charged. Oh, and when you do finish charging, the way you remove the plug is you press this button and then that will release the plug and you can place it back onto the supercharger apparatus here and you're free to go. A supercharging session, if, if you're looking to fully charge the car, it will take just over half an hour. I got away with just doing 15-20 minutes, knocking out some Duolingo. If you live in a house, I don't live in a house, so I didn't do this, but you can pop open the trunk and uncover the bag for the charger cable. So you can plug this into the wall and then plug this in, plug this side into your, into the Tesla and it'll charge your car. Expect a modest bump in your battery though. It's not as good as a supercharger, but it's still a way to go if you're just looking to get a nice bump overnight during the week that you have it. Okay, so back to the car. So now for the actual controls. So to switch to reverse, you're gonna hold the brake down and then flick this right stick up and that'll switch it to reverse. Now if the car has been idle, the Tesla may first ask you to place your key on the cup holder. So if this is you right now, be sure you hold down the brake as you scan the key and that'll enable the drive mode again. Once you're out, flick the stick down to switch to drive mode and then hit the gas to move forward. Okay. 
So if you've never driven a Tesla before, don't freak out when the car starts to break when you release the gas pedal. So this is expected. It takes a while to get used to, um, but it enables you to react quickly on the road. And I personally I actually really liked it. If you wish to navigate somewhere, just enter the address from the tablet on the map and it'll, it'll go ahead and generate the route for you. And then once you get the hang of it, you know, just driving in the car in general, you can consider enabling the autopilot. So to enable the autopilot, flick the right stick down twice in a row. If you only flick it once, you'll enable the cruise control, might come in handy. Flick it twice to enable autopilot. You'll know the autopilot is on when you see the steering wheel icon turn blue. While on autopilot, the car will stay in its lane and automatically brake or accelerate to the speed limit depending on the traffic. So yes, this thing can handle stop and go traffic or it can sail on the freeway if you're on you know, a low traffic day. If you turn on the blinker, so this is cool. So if you turn on the blinker to switch lanes while you're on the autopilot, the Tesla will attempt to change lanes for you. It's pretty phenomenal. Actually, I was, I was floored by it. I only had the courage to do it when it wasn't too congested. To get out of autopilot, all you need to do is just turn the wheel just a little bit more, just force it out or hit the brake, and that will end the autopilot session. And then while you're on autopilot, you do need to keep at least one hand on the wheel, it, and it's not foolproof, so be sure you, while you still pay attention to the road. Uh, the left stick controls the blinker, by the way, so all you need to do is hold it for a few seconds. Okay, some smaller details. The console has this flap that opens for storage, but the trick is to be gentle. Just gently close it and it will stay shut. Next, there are USB ports behind the console for your passengers in the back. I thought that was nice. And Axosoft installed a charger for your phone. So if you have a newer model, I have an iPhone 10, uh, it should charge while you're on the go. And yes, music. You can connect your phone using Bluetooth to play music as you ride. And use the slider motion, so use your fingers to slide over the speaker icon to adjust the volume. Same idea with some of these other controls, so the temperature control here will control the AC. And if you're one of the rare souls who has to drive while in the rain, um, turn on the windshield wipers by hitting this windshield icon. And you can even set how intense it's wiping. Use the left stick button for a quick... So th there's a button at the very end of the left stick that you can hit to do a windshield wipe. And if you hold it down, it'll perform a spritz. And lastly, you control the headlights from the quick control panel under lights. So high beams, regular beams, beam away. All right, I think, that, I think this should get you pretty far. I hope you're excited. I had lots of fun with it. I hope you enjoy it. Have fun.